This is exactly right. Welcome to the mini-sode of My Favorite Murder. Uh, this is the one where we read your emails um, that you have sent to us of all your crazy, different, interesting stories. Apparently it's New Year's Eve right now on, for you guys. That's right. Goodbye, 2018. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Truly and deeply. Just let's fold that year up. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, light it from the bottom with a Bic lighter. Mm. Watch it go up. Don't burn your thumb. Please drop it. <laughs> right as it really starts to take yeah take light Uh and then just let's look to the future of 2019 being peaceful beautiful um success uh satisfying (laughs) give me an adjective uh happy (laughs) um (laughs) full of cats and dogs um and happiness yep Here's your stories, guys. Happy New Year. Well, one of the better intros we've ever given. Uh, Can you tell it's late at night Uh and it's not New Year's? What uh, Do you know what you're going to do for New Year's right now? Mm -mm, No idea, you. I never know until the last minute. I have to tell you, I just got invited to my friend's party. And it's a party of people that I like uh, that are like adultish and kind of cool where I'm like, this could be the New Year's Eve that turns it all around Great. for me. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I'm going to grow my, my nails out real long. For I get, New I'm Year's. guessing Vince and I will stay at home and watch movies. Think so? Yeah. I've been uh, treating uh, the past, I'd say, eight New Year's mm-hmm. like they had nothing to do with me. <laughs> Just like that they were none of my business. I mean, that's, yeah. Right? Yes. Because what am I supposed to do? If you're sober, you really have to, you really have to do some, some internal work to Ugh. enjoy New Year's. Yeah. Uh, do you like barfing and do you like 20 year olds barfing on the sidewalk? Mm-hmm. Well, then get out there and get into it. <laughs> but if you don't. Do you like not being able to park anywhere and <laughs> other people drunk driving? And Uber rates uh, uh, up in the uh, That's right. 3000 percentile. Right. Okay. So let's see. This is a this is an interesting email to kick off. It's a New York story. It's a ghost story. Oh shit! Um, and then there's there's also a tech aspect to it for all you techies. Weird. Um, the subject line is haunted Apple Watch weather report. Okay. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen Menagerie Associates. Here's a little ghost story for you. For nine years, we've celebrated New Year's Eve at a family friend's house. And because we all have kids, we do a countdown at 9 p.m. Uh, and call it good. Love it. It's so funny. Um, everyone goes home because no one ever wants overwired kids. A few years ago, the host family's husband took his own life. <gasps> But we have continued to have this party anyway, because it's been such a long tradition. It's bittersweet. And this was the second year he wasn't there. Um, this year, when we got home, my mom called to wish us a happy new year to talk to my kids, etc. Uh, and because it's been super cold, she asked the weather. Since I was on the phone, um, I looked for the temperature on my Apple Watch, where I use an app uh that does snarky weather updates. For instance, right now it says you're going to take these clouds. You're going to like them (laughs) versus mostly cloudy. I like it. Uh, It's more fun than the basic weather app. So while talking to my mom, she asked the weather. I checked my watch and the update had nothing to do with the weather. Instead, it (gasps) said, I sent a ghost to haunt you tonight. His name is Jerry. (gasps) And Jerry is the name of our deceased (gasps) friend whose house we were just celebrating. Oh, my God. I made my husband come over and take a picture before it went away because, again, I was on the phone and couldn't do it myself. And 20 minutes later, the message was back to the regular goofy (gasps) weather updates. You know what's cooler than a million dollars? The weather outside. I immediately texted my close friends, knowing Jerry was who was an early adopter and loved tech. Um, those that knew him decided that he, if he was going to send a message, a snarky weather app would totally be the platform. <laughs> I now check the weather all the time, haven't heard from him again, and I hadn't seen any non-weather related updates since. Anyway, S says, DGH, stay sexy, don't get haunted, Gretchen. <gasps> Steven has a photo of it. The actual photo. Wow. Oh, my God. That's amazing. We'll post it on our Instagram with this post. Also, Because also it's like, 
like that's tragic tragic deaths happen um and people have to go on and there and that is that kind of thing of like no you don't stop doing it you keep on doing the tradition and you 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 know that's what a lot of people just do you 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 make do yeah um so that's kind of amazing and then it's like a little weird little message that's super creepy because it's like not like it's someone at the app was like midnight i'm gonna send a goofy thing it's like 9 50 on that clock and that's not a goofy weather no thing. it doesn't have anything to do with anything and it's this fucking rando name of the person was right it jerry garcia <laughs> um all right this one was sent to me and i just it's not new year's theme but i just i love it so much okay and i i think you'll love it too it's a little long okay my favorite murder story that i helped solve Ooh. Hi, Karen and Georgia. And just so you know, I got permission from this girl to read this. Oh, good. Okay. First of all, your podcast is amazing. I'm a huge fan and fellow serial killer murder obsessed weirdo. I'm an artist and all of my art actually has to do with uh, bringing peace to women who have been murdered. But on to the real reason I'm emailing you. My favorite murder story that I totally help solve. So I work as a manager at a restaurant in Brooklyn, New York. I have dealt with anxiety and depression for years and earlier this year decided to start microdosing with psychosib... How do you say it? Psy- psilocybin mushrooms. Shrooms. Psilocybin. Psilocybin, thank yeah. you. As a way to cope. Now, when you microdose, you don't actually trip. You just feel a little energized and much happier. So, mid-July of this year, I had been microdosing for a couple of weeks and everything had been going fine. I woke up late one morning and didn't have time to eat before I left for work, but still decided to microdose. This was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Because I took them on an empty stomach. By the time I got to work, I was full on tripping. Uh. I was managing it and staying calm and things were going fine until the bartender went on his lunch break and I got behind the <laughs> bar to cover for him. No! Next thing I know, two NYPD detectives with guns strapped their hips wearing fancy suits walk into the restaurant come over to me at the bar and ask to speak with the manager (gasps) me no at this point i'm starting to panic but managed to remain calm they in they then introduce themselves as homicide detectives and my face lights up i i'm i literally obsessively watch true crime listen to true crime read true crime etc they proceed to tell me that a couple days before a young female nurse named samantha was murdered in her home in queens she had been raped strangled wrapped in a sheet and then shoved in her closet Mm. her brother and father had found her after they broke into her apartment when she didn't respond horrible the detectives going to tell me that they believe she met the man who murdered her quote on a popular dating site and that they had just started dating but had not yet met any of her friends and family they tracked down they tracked the last known place the victim's credit card had been used and lo and behold it was at the restaurant across the street from ours Mm. um then the police tell me that the other restaurant does not have good security footage but the couple had walked in right in front of our restaurant and security camera and restaurant security cameras Mm -hmm. so they need uh, me to get the footage so that they can run facial recognition software on it in order to identify the suspect let me remind you that i'm still tripping balls and all i can think is oh my god this is real life true crime shit happening right now (laughs) right in front of me so i can't shake this freak of a grin off my face legit they must have thought i was crazy so i managed to pull myself together and go downstairs with the detectives to look through security footage after about 30 40 minutes of searching uh our timestamp was off a lot and luckily allowed me for time to start coming down from my mushroom trip yeah they were able to find the footage they needed and both the victim and the murderer walked right under our cameras they then thanked me took the footage with them and told me to stay updated on the story Ooh! not two days later i follow up with the story and find out that detectives ran the footage from our security cameras through facial recognition software and identified him they then track him from New York to guess where? Los Angeles. Ooh. Now this is the really other crazy, really crazy other part. They raid his hotel room where they find not only him, but another woman tied up who was being tortured. No. They save the woman and he is currently in prison in California facing charges of rape, kidnapping, and torture before he can be extradited back to New York to be charged with the murder of Samantha. Wow. In his most recent interviews with a reporter who visited him in prison, he said that voices in his head told him to murder Samantha along with four other women in the Connecticut and New York area that he met on dating sites. He said he, quote, liked them and didn't want to kill them, but the voices in his head made him murder them. So that is my favorite murder story and the story of how I helped homicide detectives identify and catch a killer while I was tripping balls on mushrooms. I hope you all enjoy my story. And I was like, this is bullshit. I would have heard about this. But then she's like, here's two fucking links about it. And (laughs) it's 100% true and even fucking crazier. Wow. It's bananas. Thanks so much. Best regards, Kelsey. Wow. 
That's so crazy. I know. I just the idea and it it's hilarious and insane and also kind of makes me panic the idea that she was tripping. Yeah. And then have I have you ever been around an actual uh, a detective cuz I had a homicide detective knock on my door one morning. Thank God I was like I think I'd already miraculously taken a shower which <laughs> normally wouldn't happen yeah. if I was just around the house. Yeah. Um and was like wearing a bra. <laughs> but it, somebody there had been a shooting yeah. like down the street from my house oh my god and so it was just a guy asking if i had heard yeah. anything or seen anything and i had the exact same reaction where i was like um um and i was like i was like i heard something the dogs barked i checked my back fence to make sure no one jumped over yeah. my fence and that's it but it was the, it's a whole different realm of person. Yeah. Because well, it's Paul fucking holes. It's a Paul the most holes. In, I had to have a lunch conversation with him and I was just like, I can't speak. Yes. There is a, there's a gravitas to these yeah. people. They, they're in the shit. They do the shit. They're trying to fix the shit. It's, and oftentimes they wear really good suits yes so light there's colored suits suits and, and they, they have a, but, but then they have a gun it's a gun in a suit which scares me i'm scared to be around guns it's sexy and scary yeah. it's a, a, attraction repulsion it's, it's blood like, sugar sex magic <laughs> <laughs> are you okay that wasn't that funny it was <laughs> It was. <laughs> because also what you couldn't see, listener at home, is that Georgia per, like looked down at her hand and listed those off on her fingers. Like, <laughs> like it's clearly this Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Oh, great oh, album. Fuck. Great album. Anyway. Okay. Thanks, homicide detectives around the world. Yeah. And your wonderful suits from the men's warehouse. Thank you for your service and your suits. <laughs> And your sex and, and magic. And your sex and your magic and my blood sugar. <laughs> okay, here's this one doesn't have a subject line. Hello, yeah. beautiful people and animals. This happened in 1998. I had just graduated high school and I thought I was grown, like all 18 year olds uh, huh. do. Nope, number one. I met a guy in a chat room online. Uh -oh. Nope, number two. We started meeting in person. He was in college and lived in a dorm. So when he invited me over, I thought it would be fine. Yeah. Nope, number three. I went at night. <laughs> I got into the dorm, which was tiny. It consisted of two beds and a tiny kitchenette. Nope, number four. This guy walks into the kitchenette and is in there for what I thought was too long. Suddenly, he turns around and is holding a fucking butcher knife <gasps> and is walking toward me with the most maniacal look on his face and smile smiling from ear to ear, showing all his teeth. <gasps> I can still remember what he looked like at that moment. Oh, my God. So I just took off my shoe, which was a steel-toed Doc Martin Hell boot. yeah, 1990s. And hit him in the face <gasps> as hard as I could and just booked it out of there. I've never told anyone the story, but decided to share it with you guys. <sighs> Stay sexy and don't meet people online. <laughs> Hope. P.S. I still have those docs and I wear them when I meet new people. Hell yeah. How fucking hilarious is that? And sorry, the subject line, which I didn't read you because I didn't want to blow yeah. it, um, was my Doc Martin saved my life. Uh, that's one of those really cool things that you always wish you would do and you tell yourself to do is to not wait till he's like just kidding that was a joke you fucking hit him in the face because yes. how dare you fucking pull a knife on me even as a joke well also if that's a person if that is a person who would do a joke like that to you yeah that's a dangerous totally. personality you don't know them Get well the enough fuck out that's of not a joke actually no. i have as a person who has studied jokes for quite some time <laughs> i can tell you right now a butcher knives and people who are half strangers that's not a joke no that's a person that's trying a to scare you. A butcher knife when you know someone so fucking well is not a fucking joke. Yes. Hit, hit, hit your sister in the face. Hit your Doc sister Doc in the face. Pulls, Doc Martin if she pulls a knife on you. Do the practice of, and you can say this too, you can be like, this is just a boundary I draw for myself. Yeah. If you walk toward me with a butcher knife, I will kick you in the face. Totally. That's just my personal rule. If you don't want to be friends with me because yeah. of that, so be it. Yeah. And the end. I because have, my boundary is a knife. 
and the and you know you hit the boundary when I hit you in the fucking face with my shoe. I'm not against also hitting people in the face with a shoe if they smile and show all their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> because there's you don't need to do that. It's too many. That's too that's you're doing Stephen King shit when you're showing yeah. all your even your back teeth when you're smiling? No. No, no. Stop it. We don't need to see all of them. You're no one's that happy. The two in front convey the message. Yeah, if that. I you get could it. try to do it like me where if you're worried about your yellow uh, corn niblet teeth, <laughs> you can smile as if you're always not that happy with the situation. <laughs> mm. It's a smile that goes, mm, wish it wasn't like this." Mm. I'm mad at you for making me laugh. (laughs) Okay. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go bye. Okay, here we go. Okay. Holiday Boozin reveals skeleton and family closet. Oh. Hello, Karen, Georgia, and Steven. You guys mentioned recently, sorry, cats. He doesn't, this person doesn't. <laughs> you guys mentioned recently that the holidays were a great time to pry long hidden secrets out of drunk relatives. There's no better holiday for drinking than New Year's Eve at my parents' house. And it was actually child's play to get my mom to confess something Soto voiced. What does that mean? Soto voice. It's whispering. Oh, that's a theater major right there. Thank you. Uh, after astronomical levels of wine, <laughs> while the men in the family were safely tucked away in the garage to better access the beer fridge. Oh, I could fucking picture it. Got a beer fridge. Mm. Mm. When I was born in 1991, my parents lived in a small town in Iowa with a population of about 4,000 people. Everyone knew everyone, but the way she described it, more menacing than uh, Cheers vibe, everyone was all up in everyone's business. <laughs> <laughs> my dad worked as a butcher and was handsome but shy, a combination that charmed all the old ladies in town into knitting me baby blankets and sewing me quilts. Aww. But apparently there was one customer at the meat counter who th- took things too far. Uh-uh. One day, shortly after I was born, the police showed up at the meat counter to tell my dad that he'd been subpoenaed to testify in a divorce hearing for a couple in town that my parents didn't know. He said there must be some huge misunderstanding because he'd never met the couple in question. He sat down with the husband's lawyer who showed him a picture of the wife. And though he recognized her as a customer of the store, he was adamant that he did not even know the woman. Oh, no. The lawyers then showed him hundreds of pages of crazy sexcapades (laughs) that this woman had written about in her diaries that supposedly went on between herself and my dad. Oh, shit. Like crazy level stalker fantasies. Just whole diaries filled with kinky ramblings. Don't get your hopes up, though. No amount of alcohol was, uh, was, no amount of alcohol has made my mother give up the dirty details. Trust me, which I think is probably best for you. You don't want to hear your. No. Yeah. Don't try to get your mom to tell you dirty shit about your dad. Absolutely not. Anyway, needless to say, my dad, my shy dad was mortified and the lawyers, uh, no, in no certain terms that the lady was making all this shit up. Right. All said and done, he didn't have to testify and he got a restraining order. Shit. I asked my mom what the woman's name was. I wonder where she's living now, i.e. it better be freaking far away. It's been 26 years and she no longer no longer remembers. <laughs> I personally would have prioritized that shit as something <laughs> worth remembering, though. I am also sworn to secrecy to never let my dad know that I know he was the subject of a crazy lady's erotic fiction maybe i'll pull the story out of him next new year's eve stay sexy but not so sexy you become an unstable midwestern housewife's unwitting muse (laughs) katie (laughs) i'm sorry but it's true like a a hot shy butcher oh yeah 
And oh. you're just like, you're just some ignored housewife that's just kind of trying to make it, make your day to day work. Totally. And then you're just like, I need pork chops again. I need again. something. I need hard pork, pork chops hard. <laughs> there's a sexual innuendo there that I don't feel like. But there's sexual innuendo all around the, the whole butcher situation. Yeah. It's very carnal, literally. It's very, uh, you know, it's basic. It's almost caveman yeah. shit. Yeah. We're just like, look at him cut that thing. And like, make this thing for me and wrap it in a pretty package. But he's all like, eyes down, like, well, excuse me, ma'am. And then you're blushing like, blushing while he cuts your pork chops. He likes me. Uh, he likes me. Daddy. She's sure. got defiance disorder. There you yeah, go. Yeah, bye. You. Daddy. Just be cute, but not loud. Amazing. Butchers everywhere. Uh, now I'm going to write some butcher fan fiction. <laughs> Butchers. All right, are you ready for this lighthearted Christmas found in a wall story? Sure. Hi. When my grandparents <laughs> retired. <laughs> that was such a sweet butcher. A shy butcher high. That's a shut. Oh my God, I have to go. <laughs> I have to go get a couple um sausages. Hi. 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 You want to go in the back and show me the See? where the real meat is? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What's the thing? Is that How sexy? Do you flirt? Is that sexy? Was that flirting? Just to be <laughs> Hi. Where are the, where are hey, the, do you want to show me where the real meat is? Yeah. And he's like, holy Christ. <laughs> hey, where are you? You forgot I was shy. Let's take yep. a look at your gizzards. I'm not shy. Let's take a look at <laughs> sweet breads. Show me your gizzards. <laughs> Big okay. boy. Okay. Sorry. Um, we'll continue practicing this. Okay. Hi. When my parents retired, sorry, when my grandparents retired, they sold the house my mom had grown up in to my parents. Right. Keep it in the fam. Got it. We lived there for 15 years until my parents built their dream house, moved out, and started renting the old house to friends. Several years later, the house was burned to the ground in a wildfire. Aww. Basically, the only thing left was the chimney. Aww. Once the ashes cooled, my parents and their tenant picked through the rubble. One of the few intact things they found was a little ceramic figurine. No one knew anything about the figurine, <gasps> but my mom brought it home as a memento. A month or so later, my grandma noticed the figurine and started to laugh you finally found it she said <clears throat> my mom was totally baffled until grandma explained when you were little you loved playing with the figures in the christmas nativity set <gasps> where we that we displayed by the fireplace uh one year you lost one of the wise men i was so mad they're supposed to be three and you just can't get a replacement <laughs> wise man <laughs> but you just found him <gasps> On close inspection, you can see that the figurine was molded into old-fashioned clothes and was painted until the fire burned it off. We figure Mom must have dropped the wise man into the crevice between the chimney and the wall, <gasps> making him irretrievable until the wall was destroyed. Oh, my God. There's a happy ending to the burned-down house, too. My parents donated the land to Habitat for Humanity, Aww. and now a family lives in a new house built there. Aww. Blue. Oh, it's not blue. It's, that's the person blues. Thing. The name. Okay, but was that an evil fire starting wise man? Yes, but he waited years and years. He's to get like, his revenge. I'm gonna make a quick funny joke about it. <laughs> wow, that's I'm, creepy. I'm gonna wait till everybody in, related to losing me moves away. Yeah, <laughs> that's creepy. I, I love know. it. Isn't it good? But yeah. it's like. Imagine, then I just go crazy thinking about like all the things hidden in a house. Yeah. If it's a family house that's passed down and all the things that are just like, this was in a crevice. One time at our old house, I remember looking into a heating vent and seeing something oh, down bet there. there's so much shit in heating vents. And pulling it off and finding a ring <gasps> down, down there that was like, it was either mine or my sister's. Yeah. It, we had lost it like a year before. But then being like, I think that was one of my first treasure experiences wow. where I was like, finding lost things where it's like, oh yeah, you don't think about if something drops and you didn't notice it. Well, the weird thing too is when something should be somewhere and disappears, like my mom, my sister was a little baby toddler dropped my mom's wedding ring. It was never found like yeah. on the floor. One time I threw a Barbie at my sister's head. The <laughs> shoe flew off into the closet and we never found it. It was like, well, where did the shoe, the shoe should have been there, you know? And I always figured we'd find it when we moved, but we never did. Yeah. Where'd it go? I don't know. But that just made me think of my favorite picture I ever saw on Tumblr was someone put Barbie shoes on two cigarettes and it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> That's funny. It looks like a person walking down the street. It's 
my favorite picture. I like that. It's really, I, I love Barbie shoes. Yeah, they're really ridiculous. They're such choking hazards. Uh, right? Because you had to chew them. Oh, I totally chew them. Did they ha- do we they still have them? all them? the time. I don't know. Does Barbie still have normal shoes? Choking hazard shoes? Can it, um, like a seven year old write in and just tell us <laughs> <laughs> what's the Barbie shoe status right now? That's right. Is she still in permanent high heel position? Oh, those poor feet. That used to stress me. You know, my mom didn't let us have Barbies. No. She was against. Huh. My so mom should have been. That's- if someone gave them to us, we got to keep them if it was a gift, but she wouldn't buy them. For we us. were obsessed. Like that's all we did is played with Barbies. Yeah. We got weird hippie. Like, this is a family that Midge. owns their own RV. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that owns their own, their own organic farm. For real. My <laughs> sister got a thing one year and we were both looking at it like, what the fuck? We've never seen a commercial for this family where the mom is shaped normally and the oh. children are, you know what I mean? Dude. Like, no one wears a corset in this family. I used to steal my brother's fucking G.I. Joe and he and Barbie would bang. Hell yes. I would just smash those plastic bodies together. There was something so satisfying about smashing Barbie doll bodies together and you, whatever weird made up yeah. sex idea that you That's had. That's what you think fucking is. Right. And you just got to work through it. It's kind of, I feel like in a way they kind of gave them to yeah. us. That was part of like, get ready for this weird panic that's coming in four years. And that is what sex is. Just smashing your plastic fucking bodies Smash together. Smash your plastics together. <laughs> God, I got to get, get my plastic smash pretty soon. <laughs> I haven't had my plastic smash in fucking ever. <laughs> oh, I haven't had my plastic smash in 25 years. <laughs> Has a bit of plastic smash in this house in 25 years. <laughs> Hey, y'all. Happy fucking New Year. Happy fucking New Year. Listen, let's all promise each other right fucking now. Let's set our intentions for 2019. Yeah. That we're all going to make it happen. Make it happen. Let's make it happen in 2019, everybody. Let's all smash our plastics smash together in 2019. Them plastics tonight, but safely. But say safe. Sa- safe and consensual S- plastic smashing all night. <laughs> Let's do this and thing. all of 2019, <laughs> y'all. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Elvis, want a cookie? Good boy. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Absolutely.